two, one. All right, so maximums and minimums kind of revisited from way back, I think from grade 11 at some point, except at that time you weren't aware of uh, derivatives. So that's something that I want to incorporate into this video and show you, you know, how much easier it is once you do know derivatives. And of course, you know, setting slopes equal to zero provides you and you can find your local maximum minimums. Um, finding absolute ones, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. So don't feel like just because you know the derivative, all of a sudden you're gonna be able to solve all of these maximum and minimum problems. Um, they're not as simple as it sometimes may seem. However, when you are studying kind of sketching of functions, you typically are gonna be given kind of polynomial functions, maybe quotient functions, so nothing major. Um, I don't think it's, you know, you're even gonna be touching on sines and cosines and so on. That might come a little bit later. So the idea here is to just understand what the concepts are, um, some of the terminology, and then apply it to a few examples so that you can get a gist of um, utilizing the derivative for these uh, maximums and minimums. All right, so you know I titled this critical points, and um, we do want to kind of know you know what these critical points are because they're not just where the derivative is equal to zero. So what I wanted to let you know is first of all when you are talking about critical points, those are actually um, all the points where we can find now a point is so because we're working in two dimensions here so basically it's an ordered pair so any ordered pair that we take so if I take an ordered pair a and then I will substitute that a into my function this is going to be considered a critical point if okay we have the derivative at a is equal to zero or the derivative at a simply does not exist does not exist. So those two particular cases, we would call this point right here the critical point if these two cases come up. Now, of course, the easiest one to think about, especially because you might be familiar with maximum and minimums, is when derivative is equal to zero. So when we are talking about that case, so you know, I can certainly map this up. So I, I like this little sketch that I did here because, you know, it's going to show us rather quickly. So here we know that the derivative is equal to zero at all of these points, right? So if we would be mapping this out um, onto here, so let's say, you know, let's call this particular point right here or this value, and then we want to get this value right here. All right, and then we want to get this value right here. So those particular um, numbers, at least in the domain in here, so they would be, I'm gonna call this kind of A2, uh, okay? Um, let's call this one, you know, maybe A3, and then let's call this one A4 right here. Oh, actually I used already A2, so I have to be careful there. So let me rename these, because I used A1 at the um, far points, so I guess, this function looks like it's just defined between a1 and a2. So let's you know change this up. So I guess this, let's call this a3, maybe a4 and a5. So at those points, we know that the slopes are equal to zero, okay? So just by visually, um, you know, we can see that. And that's what I would want you to get at first, kind of get the intuition behind it. Now, there are also points where, you know, we run into this problem where, our derivative actually doesn't exist. Well, one of the first uh, uh, two points that it does not exist at, uh, although you might think that it might, it actually does not exist really at these endpoints over here, okay, at A1 and A2. Why? Because please don't forget that the, the derivative, the original definition of a derivative still talks about limits. And limits meaning Okay, that it's both from the left-hand side and the right-hand side and they have to equal. So for example, here at A1, so this function, well, it doesn't exist beyond A1, so less than A1. So we're not gonna have a derivative existing from the left-hand side. And then we're not gonna have a derivative existing here from the right-hand side either. Okay, so for those two points, we have to be careful. And so the derivative doesn't really exist there. However, they are critical points. 
So it turns out that if you are given a restriction between an interval, so like here, A1 and A2, so if you would write this and you would say, okay, so we have this and it lies on this particular interval and those endpoints are included, then right away we will know, okay, that these two are gonna be critical points as well. All right, so we, we can add these up into our critical point kind of set. So we have one, two, three, which are coming from the fact that the derivative is zero at those. And then we have these two where the derivative is not necessarily zero. It actually doesn't exist because we don't have a left hand or a right hand um, derivative of those. All right, so with that being said, um, one other thing that happens, and this one is not very easy to spot, um, in particular with derivatives, and that's this point, and I'm gonna try to you know, point it out right here. So at this point, at this cusp, there, the derivative doesn't exist there because the left hand and the right hand okay, are not equal to each other, right? So, um, you know, you may recall this, you know, even if you had an absolute function. So for an absolute function, you know, we again had that little, you know, cusp there where the derivative, for example, at zero wouldn't um, exist. And if you've, you know, kind of forgot about those concepts, maybe I'll put up a link up above there for you. So this last point in here, so for this little cusp, okay, if I'm going to label it all the way across here, so let's call this, I guess, A6, all right, so I'll call this A6, this would be our sixth point. So we would have six critical points here, um, and three of them, you know, the derivative is zero, and then three of them, the derivative just doesn't exist. So this gives you some intuition and pretty much um, all the possibilities that you might run into. Now, of course, you, you know, you're not going to have the derivative existing when a function is discontinuous. Okay, so at discontinuities, we have to be careful uh, as well. You know, so if you would have something in terms of discontinuities, if it's an infinite discontinuity, then we're out to lunch. All right, for those ones, because it goes off to infinity um, in those two cases. Uh, but if you have a removable discontinuity, uh, or if you have uh, kind of a jump discontinuity, so in those two cases, you know, you can have critical points, just depends how things are defined, okay, there. So, you know, you, you have to kind of be careful and see how it's defined at those particular points. So for discontinuities, again, if you've forgotten them, I'll put up a link up above there, you know, it's definitely worth your time understanding it. But from what I uh, kind of think about in terms of teaching, especially in the beginning, you know, students want to be given nice, well-behaved -beha functions, not necessarily discontinuous with, with jumps or cusps, but first just get this concept and idea behind, you know, derivatives equal to zero and then finding your kind of local maximum and minimums. So that brings me to the next item of trying to explain here. You know, once we understand these critical points and where they occur, you know, we can certainly think about kind of local, okay, within a local um, around these critical points are these maximum or minimums. Okay, so when you are talking about the local, so for instance, you can take a critical point. So, you know, if you're going to be looking at this one, so locally, so just around that point, you want to see if that critical point is a maximum or a minimum. Well, it's a maximum if that point is the biggest value in that little, okay, local area that you're looking at. In this case, you know, that A1, if we substitute it back in, if we knew what the function was, it's not a maximum, it's not a local maximum, it's actually a local minimum, right? It's the minimum value in that local um, area. So that would have been called a local minimum. Now, you also have some other local minimums, you know, just by looking, you know, when you have things in terms of visuals, it's much easier. So this at A6 is another local minimum right here, okay, around that particular area. It's the smallest value that we have. 
And here we have another local minimum, you know, again, local minimum around that particular area. Now, local maximums, so that would be actually all of these points. So this is a local maximum because it's the maximum value that you have, again, within that interval that we're looking at. So as small as you can, kind of around it. So here it's the same thing. So that would have been a, a local maximum there. And then here, it, this is also a local maximum. Now, again, you might say, well, but it's not defined to the right of A2. That's fine. You know, when you're talking about local, it's just all the values within there. So it would have been from A2, okay, to some, you know, just a little bit over A2. So in that, it's still a local maximum there. And now the next item is if you take the entire domain, so in this case, it's restricted between A1 and A2, sometimes there is no restrictions at all, you may be asked about the absolute, right? So the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum. So what is the maximum value in here? So because this is very visual, we can see that this value right here, so that critical point, and then the value itself, so the, the value over here, if we would have been labeling it, so that value would have been F at A3. So that's the value of your absolute maximum. And then our absolute minimum for the entire domain would have been right here, and that would have been F at A5. And that would have been our absolute minimum value. Now this is visual, so we can see it, but that's the beauty about getting intuition into these. So, you know, you can make your notes and then really figure out, okay, what these local and absolute maximums and minimums are. And then all the critical values just simply have to satisfy either the derivative is zero or the derivative just doesn't exist. And again, please be careful at these points because you can't really find that particular point necessarily, okay, when it comes from setting things uh, equal to zero for your uh, derivatives, all right? And that probably can come from kind of absolute value functions, you know, you can throw that in there, or sometimes piecewise functions, right? So when you have piecewise functions and you put functions together, you're gonna get these kind of odd cusps, all right? So what will you, you know, kind of test yourself on to try to understand this concept? Okay, so let's try to utilize the derivatives in here to find these, you know, local maximum minimums and maybe absolute maximum minimums and all these critical values. So here are some examples. So I have three examples in here. So the first one is a quadratic. Now for a quadratic, we know that, you know, with quadratics, depending on how much you still remember, okay, with respect to quadratics, you know, you can put them um, in vertex form. And then we, you know, we know exactly, so the vertex is gonna be either your, your uh, maximum or your minimums because these are just parabolas. But the beauty once you have derivatives is you don't have to necessarily complete the square or anything like that. If all you're interested in is just to find these, you know, maximum and minimums or the critical values, then you can because quadratics or in fact any polynomial are very well behaved so you're not going to get any cusps or anything like that the only thing that might happen is if you are bounded between an interval on a domain but if you don't have any bound on your domain so in this case the domain is all of r so it's all the real numbers so therefore you know you can certainly take the derivative of this function so you can find the function the derivative function and in this case would have been six, this is x minus one. And then very quickly, if you set this to zero, you can see that you're gonna get, so this is six x, you know, we can bring that over, so x is one over six. And this is where the derivative is equal to zero. And now if you wanna find out, okay, the actual critical point, so this is the critical value, right? So that's the value itself, but if you wanna find the point, you can substitute it back into the equation or the function so this is at that and if you substitute it in here so squared minus one over six you know plus five and you're going to be able to get your value right so now you have your critical value you 
find this, you can find your critical point. So now the ordered pair, and you know that here you have your slope is equal to zero. Now, in this case, you know, is it a maximum or is it a minimum? So how do you tell, right? So, you know, that's the other thing is when you graph it or when you do have it graphed, then it's very easy to tell. But if you don't have it graphed, then what we typically do is we will find, you know, just kind of if within a small little interval, so to the left and then to the right, we want to be able to see what is happening to the slope, right? And in here, so notice the slope right here is positive, and then here it is negative. So when your slope goes from a negative, then it goes zero at the critical point, and then to a positive, so then you know that this would have been some kind of a local maximum. Okay, so that would have been here. Now, if you're going to find a point, so let's say if it was to the left and to the right, now in here, this is now um, right here, oh, and I, I apologize. So within here, this was positive to negative. So I just kind of screwed this up here. So this is a positive slope, this is a negative slope. So a positive slope to a negative slope here is zero. So that is some kind of a local max. We don't necessarily know if it's, if it's the absolute max. Now here we can say that because we see it visually. Now on the other side, so here, so this is negative and then this goes positive. So when we have something like this, where the slope becomes negative, goes to zero, then goes to positive, then this is some kind of a local minimum. So that would have been a local minimum. And again, so within here, it does turn out to be the absolute, um, but we can't tell that unless we have much more information or we can you know, show it in some other way. So within here, um, now, because it's a quadratic, and I can clearly see that my leading number, so this right here is actually positive. So if you remember quadratics, you know, if it's positive, so that's a parabola which is gonna be opening upwards. So I know that this is a minimum, but if you wanted to find it through the derivative, you know, you know what your value here is at zero, you can take it to the left, so you can take slightly less and then slightly more, and you should get on the left of it to be a negative, negative slope, and then to the right of it should be a positive slope right there. So if you would substitute that in there, you know, you would actually see that. So let's do one of them. So let's say, you know, I would substitute three and then this value, so one over six, okay? So this is 0 0.16666, whatever. So let's substitute something, you know, a little bit smaller. So we're gonna substitute, let's say maybe 1.6. It's a tiny bit smaller. You square it, minus, so 0 0.16. Oh, whoops, I'm substituting it into the derivative. So let me just go back here. So that's six and then 0 0.16 minus one. All right, and then what is this equal? Well, six times 0 0.16 minus one. So notice it is negative. So it turns negative. And then if we would do the same thing on the right of it, so we could substitute, let's say um, 0 0.17, so a little bit bigger, so 0 0.17 minus one. Notice this is positive. So what do we get? We get exactly a minimum. But we knew that because it was a quadratic, but you know when you're substituting it back in and you're checking your derivatives, so here the derivative was zero, then you can easily see that. So that's something that you can remember. So if you can't get a visual, especially when it's not just um, uh, you know quadratics, if it's something which is bigger of a polynomial, then you are gonna have to do that particular test to see. Now, if you wanna know for quadratics, obviously it's an absolute minimum because the parabola just goes off. Okay, there is no absolute maximum because they go off to infinity, right? So we don't have a cap anywhere for these ones, but certainly we do have a minimum and we can find it out through these derivatives. Let's take a look at another example here. So let's take this one. So I'm gonna just copy it. 
Let's bring it down. And with this one, I also will use decimals just so that we get visuals. So for instance, so it's another polynomial, but actually I believe, yeah, so we set this in here. So let me copy, let me paste it. So I have it within here. So I know that I'm gonna have to test. So this value and this value right here. So those are gonna be my, you know, capping points, okay, that I have. So those are gonna be critical points for sure. And I can find out what those values are at those points. So let me maybe find that out. So I'm gonna just put here at negative one and I'm gonna put here at three. So let's, let me just find what these are. All right, so here you go. So I just found what these were, okay? So that's kind of on the left and then on the on the right-hand side. So this is what we have in here and then this is what we have over here. All right, so now for those, those, those two are my critical points and then I can find out, okay, if those are kind of local minimums or maximums. So I can just find out, so remember, now, because the negative one in case are kind of extreme on the left, okay, in terms of our domain, then, you know, we can just set it slightly a little bit less and then find out what the value would be if it's going to be less or more than this one. And then we can decide if this is a local man, a maximum or a minimum. And then we can do the same thing with the three and the negative two. I'm going to graph it. So I'll put it up on decimals so that we can kind of see it visually. Okay, but I also wanna find some other critical points and that is gonna be through taking the derivative. So now if I do take the derivative in here, then I'm going to get, so the derivative is equal to, so negative three x two plus I guess six x and then that's gonna be nothing. So now setting this equal to zero, um, you know, I can actually find out, so let me take this negative three x out, so this is gonna be just x left in here, minus, I guess, two. So that's what I will have in there. So it looks like, you know, this is gonna be at x is equal to zero, and then from here, at x is equal to two. All right, so that's where the slope is gonna be equal to zero in here. So this one's actually not bad. I didn't even have to solve a quadratic. Okay, I can just do it by factoring. Um, and now substituting these in, okay, so into the um, equation and then finding out what happens, you know, if that's local maximums or minimums and then what those actual values are. So within here, let's just do one of them and then the rest, I'll just plot it up on decimals. So for X is equal to zero. So let's uh, try to find out, okay, so what this is. So within here, so I'm going to find, okay, so let's see if this is a local maximum or a minimum. So at x is equal to zero, so I'm gonna go just a little bit to the left. So I'll just go x is equal to, let's say negative um, you know, 0 0.1. So that's on the left-hand side, and then x is equal to 0 0.1 on the right-hand side of this. And let's see what happens to the derivative here. So if I take this, substitute it in here, so that means you know, this value right there, so it's a negative times negative, which is a positive, and then it's gonna be x, so that's negative, and still gonna be negative. So it looks like this is going to be a negative value. And then here on the right-hand side, what we're looking for, so if it's negative, so that means the slope is you know this way. So now I wanna see if I'm gonna get this going that way. All right, so we'll see what that is. Um, and so for 0 0.1, I guess I'm going to get, so this negative three times 0 0.1, so that's still negative and that's negative, so this is gonna be positive, okay? So indeed, so it's from a negative to a positive, so this looks like it's a local minimum, all right? So that's what we would have. Um, now for this one, for x is equal to two, we can do the same, um, but uh, you, you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot it up on Desmos, so for us to see, and if you wanna use the derivatives, I hope that you understand now and get the gist, okay, with how this works. So 
let me take a look at this this function right here so this was we call this f2 so f2 at x is equal to so negative x cubed uh, plus 3x squared and then minus 2 and then I guess we do have constraints here so negative 1 and x and this is going to be between 3 so it's kind of looks like this all right so there we have it so that's interesting and now we can you know we can check so at zero so indeed that was the minimum so i guess at two it looks like it's some kind of a local maximum now within here on the end endpoints okay so if we go all the way um there so if we kind of chuck all the way on here so notice that it's actually a negative one it's it's two and then as we go along here so it looks like it's negative two so you know we have two absolute minimums and then two absolute maximums so the maximum is two the minimum is negative two and it happens at both of those critical points so we have four critical points in total two of them have slopes of zero two of them are just on the extremes and that's what the function would look like okay now one other item that i do want to mention uh, as you are looking at this so if you recall if I went if I did this now notice that in here if we tried you know if we took and we used the critical point so the critical point here is um, uh, the critical point happens at x is equal to zero right so the slope is zero right at that so the slope is flat but notice if we took the derivative on the left hand side of this function it would have been positive if we took it on the right hand side it's still positive so there is no change so what does that tell us that this critical point is neither a maximum or a minimum right okay even a local maximum or a minimum because within the vicinity so around it there are values that are both lower and higher than it and that's because the slopes did not change so you know these okay um, please be careful so that you don't get fall you know you don't fall into the trap so you do have to check for yourself the derivatives on the left and on the right to see if they swap and if they do swap from negative right so if they go from a negative to a positive then it's a minimum and if they go from a positive to a negative okay then it's a maximum all right so that's something that you would see there now i think i gave you one more example or at least i wanted to show one more example because so far we've just been doing polynomials now what happens and i guess in this case you know if we have something like this so let me copy bring it down for us so right here so what happens Okay, with this. So this is a quotient function. Um, now, we do have, okay, so within here, so we're going to have a discontinuity. So within here, so x cannot be equal to zero. So we definitely, the derivative does not exist there. So it's some kind of a critical, right, point that we are dealing with. And that's uh, definitely true. And in this case, it's an infinite discontinuity because if we're trying to find the limit, from the left and the right, you'll find that they are actually blowing up. So, you know, in, in that particular case, because that is, you know, within here, so we have to be careful, you know, in the domain, okay, would be outside of this. So outside of this, we can still take the derivatives and find out where they're zero. And then we can check if there's local maximums or minimums there. Um, and then we can certainly still check, okay, on the uh, extreme side. So on the interval it's itself, so on the negative two, we can find out what happens there. And at two, we can also find out what happens there. All right. So if we're taking the derivative right here, so if I would do that, so what are we going to get? <clears throat> um, now, I guess in this case, you know, we can find the derivative in, in a few different ways. So, you know, what, what will I do? I guess let's do this. So this is 3x squared times x. I'm just going to use the quotient. 
Um, so that's one, and then this is gonna be x cubed minus one, and then this is all over right here. Um, I guess this is x, um, and this is gonna be squared, right? So that's the derivative. Now, I can certainly simplify this. So three x cubed minus x cubed, and this is gonna be plus one, okay, all over. It's going to be x squared is equal to zero. So that's going to be two x cubed plus one all over x squared is equal to zero. So now trying to find out, you know, where, um, you know, this particular function, okay, so right here, so this, we can multiply both sides. We clearly know derivative does not exist at zero. So we're gonna be dealing with just solving this. The numerator is equal to zero. And so it's this negative one, it's gonna be over two x cubed, and now cubing, sorry, taking the third root. Now third root of a negative is fine, okay? If we had square root, then we would have had a problem. But in here, we can certainly find out what that is, okay? So you know, if we take, this is gonna be the, actually it's the cubed root, so this, so three, and I guess it's negative 0 0.5. Okay, so that's our answer. So that happens at negative 0 0.7937, okay, so one, we can just kind of round that off. So we know that the derivative is equal to zero there, and now if you wanted to find out if it's a local maximum or a minimum, we're gonna have to kind of check on the left and on the right of this. So this was my X value, you know, so if this is right here, seven, nine, you know, three, seven. So, you know, in that local area right here, so just a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, we would have to find out what the derivatives are. So. Are they negative and going into positive or from a positive to a negative? And then we can find out if it's a local maximum or a local minimum, all right? And if we wanna find those values exactly, you know, we can certainly substitute this back into our original function to find out what that answer is. So it looks like we just had um, one of these. Now the other two critical points would happen at these. So we would have to substitute those. So we would have these three critical points. We have a critical point that X is equal to zero, but it's undefined there. So, you know, not, not much looking. It looks like it's gonna be blowing up there. So throughout. So let's take a look, okay? If, you know, we were working with this, I'm gonna pull up decimals again, so just to see if we were, you know, on the right track here. So this was F, 3x is equal to, and this was, I guess, x cubed minus one. I always put it in brackets so that I can do it, um, put the denominator over the entire thing. So this is what it was, and I guess we were bounded by negative two x and by two. All right, so now let's blow this up. So there you, you see that at x is equal to zero, so it's blowing up, right? So that's what we had there. So that is the, the blow up, that's the infinite discontinuity. At negative two, so you know, we could have found out exactly what that value is. It looks like it's 4.5 there. Um, at two, again, we can find out what that value is. It looks like it's a 3.5. Right, and then here is exactly um, you know the value that we had that we found where the slope. It's the only place where the slope is equal to zero, and it looks like it's a uh, a local minimum right there. So on this entire domain, you know the absolute minimums and absolute maximums don't really exist because they go off to negative infinity and positive infinity. But you do have local um, items. Right, so local minimum at uh, the point negative 0 0.7, you know, 937, etc. I guess decimals is rounding there. Um, and then your actual at negative two and then four, those are also. So at negative two, you have a local maximum. And then at two, 
Okay, if you substitute that in, you have a, a local maximum as well. All right, so those would be the three critical points. All right, so that is another use of derivatives and then helping us out in terms of functions. So I hope that you know you found these example useful and then kind of this original sketch gave you an idea about these critical points and then what to do about them if you wanted to find local maximums, minimums, and then think about absolute, right? Maximums and minimums. Now, of course, having decimals helps because it makes things very visual. So, you know, you can use it, but if you can't use it, then you have to use the derivative tests. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.